Hello and welcome to this Dr. Rossmas key skill video on dealing with multiple different chains of outcomes involving successive independent events. So we've got a probability tree here and what the tree represents is different possible sequence of events that could happen. So we've got two spins of a spinner, that shouldn't really be picked, that should be spin. So this is our first spin, we could get red or blue, and then on our second spin of the spinner, we again could get red or blue. And a particular path through this tree, from left to right, um, represents that sequence of outcomes. So, for example, if I went from left to right, I went red, and then blue like that, that represents picking red on the first spin, and then blue on the second spin. And that's saying we have a probability of 0.3 of getting red on the first spin. And then if we spun red on the first spin, then there's a probability of 0.7 of getting blue on the second spin. So I spin the spinner twice, what's the probability of getting one of each colour? Well, let's think the different possible sequence of outcomes where we'd have one of each colour. Well, we could have a red spin followed by a blue spin. That would be one of each colour. And I'm going to list that out here. So red followed by blue. I'm going to put a colon after. Or it could have been blue spin followed by a red spin. That would be one of each colour, wouldn't it? So I'm going to put here blue followed by red. So whenever you have like multiple different chains of outcomes, so multiple different possibilities like red, blue, blue, red, we've got two different possibilities here. I list them out first, I put a colon after each, and then I'm going to find the probability of each of these possible sequence of outcomes. So what's the probability of getting red and then blue? Well, let's just follow the tree. The probability of getting red on the first spin is 0.3. Then if I got red on the first spin, the probability of then getting blue is 0.7. So we've got 0.7. And what do you do with these two probabilities? Well, it's the probability of getting red and the second spin being blue. So it's the probability of the first being red and the second being blue. If you use the word and in probability, that means we times together. So we do 0.3 times 0.7. You could do that on your calculator if you wish. You get 0.21. What about getting blue then red? Well, the probability of getting blue first is 0.7. And then the probability of then getting red after getting blue here is 0.3. So we've got 0.3. Again, we times them together and we get 0.21. Now we want the probability of getting red and blue or getting blue and red. Now if you use the word or in probability, we add them. So we just add those two probabilities we have of getting red and blue or getting blue and red. And then that gives us 0.42 and that is the final answer. Now this second question is just to demonstrate that we don't need to have a tree and if you don't have the tree there's no need to actually draw it out. We can just use this principle here of listing out the outcomes first. So I've got a bag of five red balls, three green and two blue. I pick a ball, note the colour, replace it so you put the ball back and then pick another. What's the probability that they're the same colour? Well notice we've got red balls, green balls and blue balls. Now if we get two balls of the same colour, what could happen? Well it could be getting a red on the first pick and a red on the second pick, they'll be the same colour. Or you could get a green on the first pick and a green on the second pick. Or it could be you get a blue on the first pick and a blue on the second pick. Now let's work out the probability of getting red and red first. Well, the probability of getting red on the first pick, well, we've got 10 balls in total. 5 plus 3 plus 2 is 10. So it's out of 10. And of those 10 balls, 5 are red. So it's just 5 out of 10. Actually, there's no like this point. Then what's the probability of getting a red on the second pick? Now these are independent events. That means that the, the probabilities on the second pick aren't affected by your choice in the first pick. And that's because you replaced the ball. So if you put the ball back, that means you still got five red balls, three green and two blue um, in your bag. So the probability of getting red on the second pick is still going to be five tenths. And again, it's probably the first is red and the second is red. We times these together to get uh, 25 over 100. What about green and green? Well, the probability of getting green on the first pick is 3 out of 10. The probability of getting green on the second pick, because we put the green ball back, is still 3 out of 10, because the same balls are still in the bag. Times them together, you get 9 out of 100. And then finally, blue and blue, well, 2 out of the 10 are blue, so it's 2 tenths. And again, the second pick, it's still going to be 2 tenths, because we've still got 10 balls in the bag and 2 of them blue. Times them together, 4 out of 100. Now we want the probability of getting red and red, or green and green, 
or blue and blue. I've used the word or, so I'm going to add these together. Now they're the same denominators, so I'm just going to add the numerators. So 25 plus 9 is 34, plus 4 is 38, so it's 38 hundreds, or if you prefer, 0.38.